it's me, Hetty, and first of all, you know, these last several videos, you gotta just pretend like they're different days, okay? Uh, maybe they're fake or maybe they're real. Did I make all this the same day I taped it? I don't know, we'll have to find out. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a special one to my heart. I have told y'all, I, I, you know, I'm not sure if people watch the video, videos all the way through the end, but I have made mention a couple of videos ago, I think I don't remember which one actually at the moment, but how when I make something nowadays at my age, which is 50, anyway, but this particular recipe, I'm always thinking of my grandma. I will show y'all a little quick footage of, I've told y'all, if you've been with me a long time, I've shown y'all my grandma's recipe book that she saved for me. And, but in it, she also saved recipe. I guess I forgot them at the house or after one of our cooking sessions, but I'd written down several recipes and I'm nine years old. So I wrote really big, but she kept them. And, and to me, and I never knew that until after she had passed, she passed when I was 14. And so for me, every time I make this, I remember the day I made it with her the first time. Cause from the time I was little, it was my favorite cake she made and she would make it and send it home with my daddy when he, he, my daddy went by and kissed his mom every day. She didn't live too far from us, but uh, he'd pop by on his way to work or on the way home. She'd be sitting on that front porch swinging and he had to go give his mama a kiss and uh, she'd have it ready and say, send this to my babies. And I loved that. So when I got older, that's the first thing I wanted to make, that and chicken and dumplings. And we did chicken and dumplings already. So I'm I'm honestly sharing with y'all something major, major in my heart from my grandma. I have many recipes and you know, my sweet little mama, my, my sweet daddy. I mean, I have shared with y'all, when I'm sharing certain things with y'all, I'm sharing, I'm opening my heart up to y'all to share. So I'm gonna shut up because I get a little emotional when I think about it. Uh, my sweet grandma and this was her coconut cake she said if I remember correctly I was nine so I, if I remember the story she told me she started making it around the 20s she was born in 1899 so she started making this somewhere in the 1920s she got married in 1921 to my grandpa so I'm sure she was making stuff for him so this was from the 20s and uh and you know, as she got older, hey, some of the cake was getting a little burnt. Now I'm gonna tell y'all something else. I wasn't up to make it a two layer cake. And this recipe goes just fine in a 10 by 13 pan, all right? So don't feel like you gotta make a fancy layer cake with it. I've done it a million times, they come out pretty, but I wasn't up to it. But my kids wanted, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll show a picture of the one I made for Easter. And I'll show you how I'm making it in this one, but I'll include one that I made a while back, uh, well, almost two weeks ago now, for Easter. So, let's make coconut cake. Alrighty y'all, I'm gonna start with a recipe near and dear to my heart, as I explained in the video in the intro rather, and I'm gonna show you, this was my grandma section. I've got a whole bunch of recipes in here. Maybe I'll get to some more of them. My mama's got a special section. My daddy's got a special section. But anyway, I'm gonna show you this. I wrote this when I was nine years old, and this is the recipe that we're about to follow. I got a whole bunch of stuff. I've got her seven minute icing and everything else in here, and it's near and dear to me. And as I explained, she had kept these, especially for me, and she kept this book especially for me. It had been a gift from my parents to her as a book to fill with recipes, I think in the very early 50s. Um, and of course, I've got her last name, which is my maiden name, uh, covered up, because I don't know, because you gotta do that nowadays, I don't know. M was her, M is not my maiden name, M was her middle initial. So anyway, that's it. Good old beat up book. And now I'm gonna switch around. We're gonna start making us uh, the yellow cake base for the coconut cake. I moved everything around and now I'm gonna go over the ingredients of 
what you need. This is her basic, uh, she always made a yellow cake base. And this is, on, and as I said before, I believe I mentioned this in the intro, this is from the 1920s. So this is how she did it. Uh, I, I said she was born 1899 and this is how she did it. Here we go. I have here two cups of sifted, just all purpose flour. And in this, I did one teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of baking powder. They've all been sifted together, okay? And here in the actual mixing bowl, I have one stick of butter, which is equivalent to half a cup, eight tablespoons. And I ha also have, if I can speak, one and a third cups of sugar. Here I have one and one thirds cup of just milk. I have two eggs. And if you remember I told y'all, never crack your eggs directly into your bowl because sometimes you can't see well enough to fish out eggshell. And I don't think anybody wants to get an eggshell in their cake. I have two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and yes, folks, I do make my own vanilla extract, and you can too. The link will be down below in the description. And speaking of description, down in the description underneath this video is, it says description, you click on it, it opens up. A lot of people, they ask me stuff that's actually in the written uh, recipe. And I always refer you to the written recipe. So, let me see here. Oh, here's the last thing I've got. And this is for the end. This is after I do the seven minute icing and everything else. This is at the very end. I have some just cherries. It wouldn't be grandma's coconut cake if I didn't have some cherries on top of it. All right, so obviously I'm gonna cream my butter and sugar together. And so we'll get started on that. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do everything else. I'll bring you back when I move things around. You know I'm working around a tripod, folks, so forgive me. I've got to get ready. I don't want to drop my light. I think the mixer's wrecked around the light. I want to start off low. I need a new mixer, guys. This was like a 888 Walmart special when my other one died several years back. There's a lot of things I like about it all right, and there's a lot of them I just don't like. Didn't have a release button for the first she did. I didn't realize that until I got it home and used it. Didn't have a release button on the mixers. I'm gonna quit talking while this is on because it's aggravating. So as you can see, I'm gonna cream. I'm sorry about that. I just was talking, I'm not thinking. Uh sorry, Belle's in the background. Meow, she's playing. So she's she talks herself. Anyway, I'm gonna cream this up. I'll bring you right back so you don't have to hear the mixer going. It's just aggravating, I know. I'm <laughs> just messing with y'all. I'm going to edit this part out after this. I'm just being silly. Now, in goes half of my milk. And in goes half of the flour mixture. Which again included baking powder and the salt. Also, I'm going to put in one egg. Now I'm going to beat all this up together. And again, I'll bring you back. So you don't have to hear the noise. I'm not trying to beat this to death. I don't want to overwork my batter. So in goes the remaining flour. In goes the remaining milk. In goes the egg. And this time around, in goes the extract. Okay. Let me get going here. Maybe I'll speed this part up. I won't talk. All right. I scraped my bolt. I scraped the bowl down. Now I'm going to give it one final little spin. I have not been beat, overly beating this. I'm not standing here for two or three minutes. I hadn't even gone two minutes top, so I'm going to finish up about two minutes. You don't beat it long, she said. Okay, we're calling this done. And now i got to switch around and get my cake pan. I am going to spray it with uh, cooking spray, you know, baking cooking spray. Or uh, back in the day, she greased hers with Crisco. You can do that if you want to, but my mama and my other grandmother, they didn't use Crisco. Anyway, they used butter at the time, butter and flour back in the day. But then, you know, baking Pam. Ah, thank you, baking Pam. Thank you, cooking spray in general. Since I was a kid, you've been making my life easy. Okay, I'll be back. By the way, you know I'm bad about this. And as I said in the beginning, always check 
Recipes down below. Preheat your oven to 375. This batter is going to look a little on the thin side. And that's the way it's supposed to look. And no, I'm not doing it. This is for a two-layer cake. But I, nowadays, remember what I said about picking your battles? It's just the five of us going to have it. So, you know, why? I don't want to mess with it. We just want a little dessert for later. So this is what we're doing. Okay, brother, don't be jealous. Maybe if you're a good boy, I'll make you want to send it home. <laughs> yes, brother loves our grandmother's cake too. Okay, here you go. Preheat seven, uh, 375 in between 25 and 30 minutes. I have talked to y'all about your ovens a million, zillion, trillion times. Start shaking at 24 all the way up to 32, depending on your oven. And it's the classic thing when a skewer, toothpick, butter knife, when it goes in the center and comes out clean, it's done. Alrighty. I don't mean to sound sharp and mean. I don't, I don't mean it like that. Sometimes I think, I think I sound mean. I don't mean it mean. I don't mean it mean. There you go. I don't mean it mean. New motto. Um, going in the oven. When it's done, ready to cool, I'll bring you back. All right, y'all, I just took it out. It's going to cool. And unbeknownst to me, I accidentally had one edge. I actually, at the same time, I'm making my brother one in a disposable cake pan. And so when you use a disposable cake pan, you should always put a cookie sheet under it. And when I put them in side by side, my this pan kind of got up on the edge, just a hair, and slightly lopsided. But guess what? This is just for us here. I'm not sending this anybody. This is just a dessert for after supper tonight. So, cake's gonna cool. And I'll have to make the seven minute icing. If it's in this video, <laughs> keep watching. And if not, it's gonna be a separate video, but I actually think I'm gonna put it in this video. All right, so having said that, this is gonna cool completely to the touch. I decided I'm just gonna combine this video so we're good to go. All right. For information's sake, I am making a double batch of seven minute icing. I made my brother a cake too that I'm gonna send home, so I'm doing a double batch. Now, if you're doing a triple layer cake, uh, three thin layers, you know, for your coconut cake, you'll wanna make a double batch as well. But this should be enough Look, I'm not even taking my cake out of the pan. I'm being a lazy folks. So for years, I always did it as a two layer and just sometimes it was either make the cake in a 10 by 13 and be done, throw the icing on after it cooled or don't make it at all. So no big deal. My family has no problem with that. <laughs> if I want to be purred, then I can make a layer cake. But baking is not my main forte, okay? I've told you all that many times. Can I bake a few things? Yes. Am I perfect? Could I work at a bakery? I doubt that. Okay, let's go. So I'll have, as always, recipe down below for enough frosting to do one 10 by 13 cake or two layers. If you like a lot of extra frosting, you might want to do a double batch. Okay, so in goes my sugar. Uh, the recipe calls for one and a half cups of sugar. It calls for two teaspoons K-Row syrup, light. And it calls for five tablespoons of water, which basically I've just gone, it's one third cup of water. It calls for a teaspoon of vanilla. And it also calls for a half teaspoon of salt. That's it. I don't use cream of tartar. My grandma didn't. And I don't either. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna do is we've got our sugar in here and got my egg whites. Remember, I'm making a double batch. And I'm gonna put everything in here except for the vanilla. The water's going and everything's going in. Everything's gotta go in. And then here goes the Cairo.
All right. Now I'm working around a tripod, so this is going to be awkward, but I'm going to try to do it for y'all. Okay. I'll try to center this in editing for you. And I'm going to start out on low. We are, I, I, also, I do have a pot on the stove with simmering water on medium. I brought it up to a boil and I turned it down. It's been simmering over there. Because we're going to do the double boiler. If you want to do a double boiler, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the mixer on again. If you want to do a double boiler and you have one, knock yourself out. This is fine. I do it like this. I have a double boiler too, but guess what? It's just as easy to do it like this. Now, be careful. You know, I've got a million stainless steel bolts. I've got so many. And a lot of my favorite ones have that silicone rubber, whatever, bottom on them to keep them from slipping. Don't use those. You need to use something solid. Like this one, I can't turn it over now, but it's just plain stainless steel, 100%. There's no bottom on it to help it, you know, and keep it in place. Also, I want to tell you something funny. Now, my grandmother, uh, back in the day, my grandma, she boiled the sugar and the Cairo syrup together. And when I learned to do this, that's how we did it, on the stove in a heavy bottom pot. And she brought it up to a boil, and you kept stirring it and stirring it until she taught me. I didn't know what that meant. She said, till it spins a thread. And I remember thinking, okay, she explained it. it was really thin. When it strings out really thin, then it's ready. Then she'd beat her egg whites in. But, you know, can you imagine doing this in the 20s without an electric mixer? Because by the time I came along, she'd had an electric mixer probably 15 years, you know. Uh, but anyway, I just want to tell you that. I just, every time I make this, I always think till it's, you know, spins a thread. But I don't do it that way anymore. I've modernized the way I do it. It's still her recipe exactly, but... And you know, look, I'm sure everybody and their brother had this recipe. I'm sure everybody and their brother had this recipe back in the 20s. So, this is by no means something she made up. I mean, she got it from somewhere. Probably some ladies' magazine or something. <laughs> All right, okay. All I did is mix it, okay? So, I'm going to bring you back. got to move over to the stove. I'll bring you right back when I switch over. Obviously, I've moved over to the stove. Here is everything. I had to replug in my mixer and everything. And here's my water simmering. I've got it on medium. So I've already started my timer. I started it for eight minutes so I could finish getting everything ready. But I'm going to beat this for about six minutes. And then I'm going to put off the heat and finish it. Okay, so let's get going. I'm absolutely not about to let you stand here the whole time while I'm doing seven minute icing. Okay? I might record it and then edit it out when it's starting to change or something. But other than that, we're going to speed through this part. Okay, remember, don't forget, I've got everything in except for the vanilla. It will go in after I bring it off the heat. Okay, here we go. Do not burn yourself. Have something available like I don't. Hold on a sec. Bump the tripod. Had to set it back up. Anyway, okay, here we go. I've got something to hold my bowl because it's going to be hot. And we're gonna get going. I'm gonna get this going. Then I'll keep just editing as it changes, okay? Here we go. I did wanna make mention, as you can see, we're almost three minutes in. It's already uh, getting thick and frothy. But I do wanna tell you, this is not the time to text or take a phone call. You've gotta stand here and mix. If you're gonna make this kind of icing, you have to be committed enough. You can stand here six minutes and then one more minute off the burner, okay? Sometimes if I make a double batch, I actually do mix for seven minutes on heat and then I take it off for a minute. So maybe it's eight minute icing in a double batch, but it just depends on how it's doing when that timer goes off. Okay, I just wanted to make note of that, okay? I gotta get back to beating, folks. Another note, if you accidentally splash it somewhere, like on the back of your stove or on the stove, warning. As soon as you can, you gotta keep mixing first, but as soon as you can take that off the heat and finish the icing, you get right to cleaning that up because this, it, it, it's just like, it's a nightmare to get off if it dries. So I always try to hunt for any splashes that I accidentally did. Okay, gotta get back to mixing, folks. All right, you see it's still getting frothy. I'm about four minutes into it. All right, I'll see you in a minute. I am going for the full seven minutes because again, like I said, this is a double recipe. Also have something over here when you pull your bowl off, you got the kind of cabinets you need to protect. Have a towel, pot holder, a trivet, whatever you have. Back to beating, folks. Uh, I said I had a double batch, and it dawned on me. All right. 
I've been going eight minutes. This is getting it where I need to be. I'm still going to beat it, but I'm going to move away from the stove. Of course, this burner's hot. I just cut it off. But I had to get off that water. And it dawned on me, today is very, very humid. And I made the mistake of, quote, airing out the house. So it's very humid in here right now. So I'm going to remove this completely from the heat. We're going to keep beating. I'm going to move back to the other table. It won't take me two seconds. Naturally, if I'm not making a video, I'm not stopping the process at all. But I did move it. This is not going to affect it. I'm just going to keep beating it. It's not about, I know it's called seven minute icing. I'm doing a double batch. Humidity does matter. It only adds a couple minutes, no big deal. But you're going to learn, you're going to just beat it until the peaks start getting stiff. It's not about the minutes. But normally when I'm doing one batch, I actually take it off the heat in six minutes, beat it for a minute. It is seven minute icing. But this, sometimes when I do a double batch, it takes longer. All right, back to beating. Okay, now for the icing. Now, of course, half of this goes on my brother's cake. So I'm just going to take half. You can see the peaks. And I want to admit something. I did forget you for a second, and I did beat the vanilla in. I was just on autopilot. I was getting tired. And I realized you didn't see me pouring the vanilla, but I did. All right, so I'm going to take about half of this. And I just plop it down onto the cake. It's a soft icing. Do not be concerned with that. Now, you do want it to hold a peak like that. See how it holds a soft peak? That's a soft peak. Now, I think that's probably going to be enough. I can add more if I need to. This is messy. So, I'm going to move this out of the way. We'll come in. You can use old butter knife. I have this, so I'm using it. And look how beautiful and soft this is. And I'm just going to push to the corner. Yes, I'm being lazy. Again, you definitely make a two-layer cake with this. And look, I'll tell you a secret. This, the, the cake part, it's excellent. It's so easy to mix up. You don't have to even make a coconut cake. You can put chocolate icing on it. You can put lemon icing on it. Whatever you want to do. You don't have to make it a coconut. But for me, this is my connection with my grandmother. So, I will... Be making this a coconut cake you do not have to all right i'm gonna finish icing this and when i'm gonna put the coconut on i'll let you know all i did off camera is i just turned the pan around where i could reach it better and i pushed into the corners now there is no actual measurement of coconut the measurement of coconut if you're doing two layers you would layer your bottom round and then of course ice it and then you'd come in and put coconut between your layers as well but in this case i just Put enough on there that I know is right. This is Baker's Sweetened Coconut. You do you. I'm doing grandma. So, this is what she used. This is what I use. All right, I'll finish sprinkling coconut. I'll bring you right back. This video is getting kind of long, I think. I don't think I'm going to win the blue ribbon as far as appearance goes. But taste-wise, oh yeah, I believe I would. So I stand behind this cake, and now we gotta do the last thing. And what is that? Those cherries, totally optional. But to me, it wouldn't be my grandma's cake if I didn't put these cherries on here. So I just kinda go along. There you go. It's good. And then I'm gonna cut you a piece. Alrighty, no frills tonight, guys. I'm gonna cut into this. And you cut up the middle, and I'm not being fancy with this, and I should have centered my cherries a little better, but it's going to be good. I can tell you that much. I can get it out. That first piece always hard to get out. Let me see if I can get this under here and lift it up. All right. Okay, look at that. Oh, I'm about to enjoy this. But I'll take a picture of it first. Picture of it first, if I can speak. All right. I will see you in two seconds. All right. Dun, 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 dun. So good. I have a picture of the side so you can see it. If I could turn it, I don't want to slide it off the plate. So I will put a picture right here. Pretty simple, huh? Very old-fashioned cake. And... To me, it's easier to whip that up. I mean, I make a one, two, three, four cake. There's all kinds of cakes I make. But when I, I have to use this recipe. I've got other coconut cake recipes, but I have to use this one a lot of times because I'm thinking about her, my grandma. So, also, the seven-minute the seven minute icing, 
I'll show you how to do that. There's nothing to it. Maybe I'll combine them. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I won't. If the next video after this is seven minute icing, that means <laughs> if you didn't see me make the icing, then it'll be in a separate video. All right. Until next time. And thank you for watching. And thank you for letting me share my stories with you.